Hey there, Shadows of Brimstone fans. Aaron Lovejoy here from Miniature Monthly. And I know you just got your revised City of Ancients set. Okay, we've had a problem here. What's that? Huh? What did, I, what did I say? Oh, shoot. It's the revised Swamps of Death. I tell you, that's why I'm in the painting department and not the naming department. Bam. You pulled out that harbinger and you're looking at him and you're like, how the heck do I put this thing together? Well, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you exactly how to put it together. In fact, um, if you're just, your goal is just to get them off the sprue and get them on the table and start gaming, watch the first part of this video. But if you're like me and you want to do a little bit something more, watch the rest of the video because I'm going to show you how to kit this bad boy out and make him super, super cool. Get rid of all those mold lines, get rid of all those gaps, make him Super Tiki Torch, baby. All right, let's do this. All right, all right. So let's take a good close-up look at the new Harbinger. Look at all this juicy detail. Let's bring this closer to the camera. Look at all that detail in there. Super, super cool. The wings are super hyper detailed. Um, just really, really nice. This is a single sprue model, um, so it's big, but it's not super, super big. And um, and the new Harbinger comes with its own sort of little display base. This new model is super cool. Let's get to putting it together. First things first, you're going to need some tools. Uh, I got a pair of God Hand clippers here. Um, these clippers are super sharp, super nice. They also tend to break. The tips break off of them very easily <laughs> because they're so sharp, but mine still work great. So I'm going to have those. You can just use regular uh, uh, plastic sprue cutters if you want, but I prefer the God Hands. I've also got several knives. Um, knives are super sharp. Be sure, be sure to be very careful when you're using knives. Um, if you're a little kid, don't use it. Have your parents do it. If you're a parent, um, don't cut your finger off. That's all I'm saying. So be very careful uh, with sharp, sharp implements like this. Um, so I've got a, a round tipped knife. Um, this is for scraping, uh, scraping like curved areas. Very nice. I've also got a scalpel with a round tip on it. Um, and that is also for scraping areas. I've got a file uh, for filing down stuff. This works very good. It's the beveled edge one. So it's beveled on one side, flat on the other. Very cool. And then I've got a regular uh, X-Acto knife. So, Let's get started with uh, cutting this thing apart. First thing, we got to clip everything off. Um, I, with these uh, God Hand clippers, I can clip right up to the model. Um, no worries here of pulling plastic out or anything. If you've got regular clippers, I suggest clipping a little further away from the model and then coming up with a knife and cutting off that little nub. But if you got God Hands, you don't need to do that. Sometimes if I'm doing production, um, you know, for all of you uh, commission painters out there and you got to do assembly, um, I find that clipping in the same direction and not spinning the sprue around is very beneficial to going fast. So I'll just clip all the way down the sprue, only hitting the nubs that are in this direction. It's always uh, good to take a close look at your model and make sure you don't clip things off that are supposed to be there. <laughs> so I know a lot of people have clipped hands and fingers and stuff like that off of their models. They didn't mean to. So um, just be real careful. It always pays to take a, a good once over of the model first before you go to chopping things off. All right, once you've clipped everything off, move it all out of the way, shove it right off, and take another good look at your sprue and make sure there are no teeny tiny parts on it. All right, we've got all the pieces off the sprue and you're ready to go. Put everything into a little plastic bag and now you're ready to game. No, just kidding. Um, we've got to glue this thing together. But first, we've got to get those little nubs off. You know, the little tabs that, that you could kind of still see from the sprue? Um, that's going to make it difficult to put this model together. So let's get those off right now. Next up, I always make sure that I've got all my parts. 
So I've got a base, got a tail, got one, two arms, got his two legs, got both the torso parts. If you want to do a dry fit, that's fine. Just make sure sometimes these little pegs are really uh, tight. When you put it on, you can't get it back off again. So I just always make sure that they're not too tight, but do a little dry fit there. Uh, everything has little pegs in it. Which way do these things go? Who knows? Oh, those are the arms. Okay. Um, arms will go down here. So probably something like that. There we go. Now it's starting to look like the harbinger of old. Um, we've got two horns for the head. We should have two feet. And then the face. That. got all our parts uh, now we just need to do a quick cleaning so I'm going to show this to you two different ways for those of you who just want to cut your harbinger up get them off the sprue put them together as quickly as possible this is for you for those of you who would like to do a little bit better job and clean everything more thoroughly um, we will I will show you how to do that after the initial this is pretty important you don't have to do this but it's probably a good idea because otherwise your model will look, it'll look a little bit rough, right? You know, we don't want, we don't want to look totally lame in front of our friends when they're playing with our models and we don't want to have big pieces of sprue hanging off. So you can just get that and always helps to remember roughly how many uh, points that were connected. We'll just clip those off. So this one had, I think, four. Good to go. So same with the arms. And so you notice I'm cutting towards myself. Um, it is very, very difficult to cut away from yourself. Um, and in fact, I've heard from a couple different people that it's actually more dangerous to cut away from yourself than it is to cut towards yourself. So. Anyways, that being said, I cut towards myself, but I'm not pushing real hard. I'm not pulling real hard. Also, this blade's a little bit dull. It's not like fresh out of the box. Um, so if you have a brand new blade, be very, very careful because you'll have a tendency to, you know, pull back too hard and cut yourself. So what I usually do is I is I grip it like this, with my fingers, I got my thumbs down this way, and I'm pulling this way, and I'm only pulling hard enough to get right past that little point right there. You see like sprue like this that are real close to the edge. That's important to get those cut off and clean because if a little bit of that sprue is sticking over, it might uh, make it so the two parts don't fit together really well. Um, so this part's a little bit harder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do kind of a shaving motion. I cut and, and move my blade down the model like this. And that gives me a nice, it gives a better cutting action. And I don't have to just push really hard to cut through there and potentially cut myself. So another good way of keeping you from cutting up your fingers. So just do that sawing action kind of. There's one on the end of this nub. A lot of times nubs like this that I know a foot's going to go down there. I cut off a little bit more of that, of that piece of plastic than I think I need to because I want it to fit down into that foot properly and again this doesn't take all that all too long and it's gonna make your model go together so much better this one's weird I'm gonna get my sprue cutter and try to get in there I cut it a little bit better. Again, if things don't cut right away, don't force it. This is when you cut yourself. I, uh, I nearly cut my finger off. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, on a Shadows of Brimstone model, one in the studio, the, the female drifter, trying to cut her arm off and reposition it, and I literally almost chopped the top of my thumb off. You can actually see the scar right here and the cut went all the way to the center of my thumbnail and the center of my finger back here. It was bad. So yes, 
don't don't force it because you'll be like me laying on the ground in a game store almost passing out due to the extreme pain the other thing you may want to be careful of is not being too aggressive especially in the areas like uh, like here or here where you've got some detail there and you don't just want to like cut a big square you know a big flat area off you're going to be a little bit more careful because you don't want you don't want it to look like you took a hacksaw to your model you want to you want to save some of that detail in there so on on this part of the wing I'm doing little clips all the way around just getting it sort of rounded looking something like right here cut off a little bit leave a little bit of the nub and then come back in and cut it a little cleaner this one I'm going to use my snips Take that off it's a pretty clean cut and then Gonna get the rest of this right like that. If you're not sure if you got it good, just kind of rub your finger over it. It should be smooth. Smooth, you're good to go. These these nubs right in here are super important that you get them good because if you don't, when the leg and the arms attach, it won't fit snugly. Like here with the head, the head won't fit on there if you don't cut this off. All right, so here's my first little mess up, maybe, kind of, sort of. So you see there's these little horns off the ends of each one of these bony sections. Um, one of those horns is actually an attachment point to the sprue, and I may have cut that off a little bit more than I should have, but I will leave this right like that. That's just for me and you to know. Um, this is going to actually be the new studio model version of this model. So uh, when you see it, look for a clipped off horn right there and you'll know of Aaron's folly. Sometimes if a part is not wanting to come out right away, I will cut it into smaller sections because it's easier to cut little slivers of plastic than it is there. And then see if, instead of just pushing straight down, I kind of cut like that. All right, we got all our nubs off. And if that's all you want to do, like if, if your goal is just to get these models on the gaming table, then um, we just need to glue the glue the Harbinger together right now. So I'm going to show you that. But if your goal is to go a little bit further or a lot further and you want this to be more like my studio version, which had no mold lines, no gaps, no nothing, um, stick around and watch the rest of the video. But for now, let's get this thing glued together. <laughs> I would suggest doing a dry fit. The cool, look at these cool pegs right here. Those fit so deeply down into the body. You can actually not glue these in, and then that way it's easier to store. You can just leave them out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna dry fit all the parts real quick. That leg, the other leg. arms so it looks like everything can go together like everything can be glued together in pieces um, I know like in the first sets uh, some of the pieces you had to put in before you glued the parts together but I think Daniel listened to me because I told him don't do that <laughs> it's okay I mean you know everybody puts together the models differently but I like the fact that sometimes you know, I can put a piece on later. Um, if I wanted to have this guy's head a different direction, I could cut that nub off and just turn his head a little bit or lean it up or whatever I want to do. So this is really nice because you don't have to worry about putting it together in a certain order. Um, obviously, take your directions and, and read them and follow them. But um, otherwise, you should be okay with just doing a quick dry fit and then putting everything together. And I cut my paper towel up into little pieces and I do these little funnels. Maybe I'll tear off the back end of this and make a little bit flatter one. What these are, these are my glue soakers. 
So if any of that glue comes out the side, I take my towel real quick and I wipe it all the way down. Now you can't do this with plastic glue because plastic glue is literally melting the, the plastic pieces together. But I typically use super glue. I like super glue better because it, it dries quicker. And I can do this trick where I wipe down the edge and it, it gives me a nice clean surface. You know, I don't have any glue bubbles coming out or anything like that. I am going to start with the main body. Um, I did a dry fit again, double checking everything, make sure all my gaps are sufficiently large enough to put putty into. Sometimes you do the gap thing and it's just not quite enough. So. Okay, I know I just gave a couple of you heart attacks there because the gaps in the Harbinger are not that big. Um, I actually, in if you watch the rest of this video, I actually make the gaps bigger um, to help me with with the gap filling process, you know, so I can put my putty down in those gaps. Um, your harbinger will not have as big as gaps as these. <laughs> I guarantee it. So, um, I'll do that. Uh, you can also use a, an old paintbrush to kind of uh, wipe down all the edges because sometimes a little bit of the plastic gets stuck onto the model. And uh, you want to get all that off. I'm going to put a little bead of glue all the way around. Take my other piece and put it on. Already glued my finger on, which is a good, good sign. Get you off in there. Oops. So if some of your paper towel sticks immediately, um, you can always just wipe it off or shave it off later with a knife. So you may be wondering why those gaps are so big. Um, later in this video, I show you how to fill the gaps or make the gaps bigger that actually helps you to fill the gaps more evenly. So um, that's why those gaps are bigger. If you didn't do that part, um, you're just putting the model together and you can see it being glued here. Uh, gluing each of these parts, see the spiny ridge on the back of the tail? The tail swings off to the left. So you just wanna get that in there right. Use your paper towel, wipe off any extra glue. Um, the feet will kind of give you some problems for sure. It gave me problems. You'll see me here struggling here in a second. Um, so these are tiny little connections. They fit in very well. There's nothing wrong with that. I always do a test fit onto the base just to make sure that he's level. And that's where I started having problems because I was pressing and the feet kept popping off. Um, the glue was taking too long to dry. You know, this is one of those things with super glue. Um, <laughs> just just maddening right um this is one of those things where maybe having an extra set of hands um grab your significant other one of your kids a friend you know phone a friend bring them over um but in the end i just used insta set so i put the foot on kind of test fit again i was getting a little really frustrated here um get that test fit down the foot's about where i want it I uh, use the tail to kind of hold it up and I insta set it and it's cured perfectly. So that's how I set those feet. Um, <clears throat> for the head, let's make sure again that there isn't any plastic shavings, especially if you did the gap filling thing that I'll show you here in a second. Um, and wipe off all that excess glue and glue that head on. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, the arms. Uh, don't put the arm in like this. Hello, teacher, I have a question. <laughs> no, the arm goes for this one, goes down a little bit like that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the harbinger, baby. All right, so we get that other arm on, get him glued in there. Yeah, this is coming together, baby. All right, the horns go like that. They kind of swing out and over. Get that glue wiped off, get the other horn on. So everything's put together and looking good, baby. Okay, so I'm going to leave him off of his base for now. Probably what will happen is um, I'll build out his base. I'll do the sculpting video part of that base, um, which will be fairly quick. And then... I will paint the base and then probably glue him on after he's been primed. And then that way I, I have something to hold on to. Um, but the bottom part of the base is already done. Um, otherwise, it's going to be hard to get my brushes in there. And it's just so much quicker and easier to paint a base without the model on it. Um, the wings, like I said before, actually stick in there pretty well. This is well designed. 
just like that. Zoom out here. Wow, he is looking awesome. All right, so if that's as far as you want to go, the Harbinger's done, you're ready to start gaming with them. Everything's put together. Uh, maybe you left the wings off just so it's easier to transport or whatever if you're going to a buddy's house or whatever. Otherwise, you're good to go. And my job here today is done. Woo! <laughs> but if you want to go further, well, I got about six more hours of editing to do. Let's do this. <laughs> go one step further and make your models a little bit nicer we want to do what's called getting rid of the mold lines or demold lining or making your model not suck as much um, that's another technical term for it uh, anyways there are in between the molds is a little bitty line you can see it going all the way down this model um, maybe more evident in parts like well, maybe not this one because this one is pretty flat. But sometimes the mold lines come up and follow the edges right here, that type of thing. Uh, you will see mold line very easily right here, all the way along the outside edge of this. So to clean this off, you're going to want to either take, uh, we're going to take our full complemented knife. So we got the rounded knife, the straight knife, I've got a scalpel, and I've got my file. And I'm going to be switching between all three of these. So. Straight knife is perfect for edges like this. So what I'm doing is I'm taking I'm taking the side of the, the, the knife and I'm scraping. See how it scrapes that off? You don't want to scrape real hard. You just want to do sort of a light scraping. And what I usually do is I roll my knife over so I don't scrape all from one direction. I'll scrape kind of in a rounded fashion. Unless, of course, this is a flat piece. Um, and what this does is it takes off that mold line, but it also doesn't create a new false mold line because if you scrape too long in the same spot, it will flatten out that area and it will actually make it look like there's a mold line on either side of it. So I just scrape these off. If there's little areas I couldn't quite get to, I just sort of carve and boom. So do stuff like this. Now, what would I use the rounded edge one? Well, down here, it kind of curves in and around. Well, it's much easier to get my round edge exacto into that spot. Or spots like this in the corners, I can kind of get in there, squish it, all little areas like that. Much easier to get to with a round edged exacto. If we've got parts that are really hard to get to, like the inside of these wings, I can use my my scalpel and get in there. Now scalpel, you gotta be real careful because this is what they do surgery with. You know, the doctor, he's gonna use one of these on you to, to burst that boil on your butt or whatever. And uh, so anyways, I use the sharpness of this blade. I don't usually trim uh, the little gates and stuff off, the sprue off with this because I'm afraid that I'm gonna pull and cut myself really badly. But this is great for removing mold lines because it's so sharp, it just scrapes everything off perfectly. You can almost see where it starts roughing up that mold line. Getting it just right. But I don't do this for the bulk of the work because I don't want it to get dulled out. So I will just continue using my normal knife and scraping all these mold lines. Now, areas like this, you can either do what I call, on most commissions, I will do what's called a light mold line removal. So I just go real quick and I don't even really look too much to see if the mold line's gone all the way or not. Because usually I'm doing like 100 models and it's just going to take way too long. Plus the customer doesn't want to pay for me to spend an hour on each model. Now what I may do is come back in and go, okay, this is an area where I think I need to do a little bit more work in. So I'm gonna carve out in that knuckle. I'm gonna come back in here, make sure that these little horns are done. This is little harbinger fingers. Get the edge of that. 
and it seems pretty good. The leading edge of this wing, so the important parts of this, not so much the back of the wing because this is angled down and nobody's gonna see that. Um, well, they might see it, it's actually probably up like this. So um, I wanna make sure that front edge is doesn't have a mold line on it. The back edge is more, uh, it's more textured. There's a lot of ins and out in the sculpt and that's going to be harder to clean those mold lines. So maybe I'll just hit these upper little areas with the horns. The one I chopped off and then kind of do a real light across these. I'm not scraping real hard. I'm letting my, my, uh, my exacto knife kind of bounce along the tops of all these edges and I'm just gonna get as much of those mold lines off as I can and then not worry about it too much. Now, if I wanna do a little bit better job, maybe I just, I don't wanna have the any semblance of a mold line at all on my model. You're gonna to have to come in here and carve out each one of these. Now you may also wanna use uh, your file. It could be a great, this could be a great opportunity for your file because you can come in here don't even worry about the knife and just kind of scrape away at all these parts. Just be careful because you file it away completely and it's gone, you can't, you can't put it back. <laughs> so you don't wanna get rid of uh, detail that you wanna have on there. You just wanna take off that mold line. So when I'm filing, I'm literally just laying, like I'm like, like if I just lay that file on top of it, that's about the pressure that I wanna have. Maybe a little bit harder than that, but not a lot. You'd be surprised at how much plastic comes off with a very light filing. Um, when I first started doing models, building models and stuff, I had a file, well, it was probably this one. <laughs> and the first couple models I did, I was so heavy handed with it, I, I wrecked them. I ruined the model with my file. And so I stopped using it because I was like, okay, this doesn't work. But then I learned to be very delicate it's that delicately aggressive. Aggressive uh, lifestyle that we all look out for um, and are striving to, to uh, be part of. Delicately aggressive. Anyways, uh, just kind of come in here with all these and you will get all that stuff off. So we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the mold lines off of this whole model, and um, and then we will be on to the next step. All right, so you got all your mold lines off, but sometimes during the process of getting mold lines off, um, you lose a little bit of detail. Let's check out these horns and um, see how I bring back some of that detail just using my file. All right, so we've got everything cleaned up, and um, I've got our little horn here that goes in the head. And a lot of people ask me how to how to fix this area right here. So a lot of times what happens where the two mold pieces come together, a lot of times it will flatten out just a little bit right by that mold. I've done my scrapey scrape thing with my um, X-Acto blade, uh, but I wanna get some of that detail back. So if you so choose, you can take your file like this and uh, go around each one of these parts of the horn and try to file back in some of that detail. It's amazing what you can get away with with a file. Just a file. You may want to try, they do have smaller files than this, little bitty hobby ones. I tend not to use them because they're just really small, but for something like this it might work pretty well. And you can use, uh, they've got triangle shapes and round shapes and stuff like that. So maybe you get a shape that fits better into these parts. But you see right here, I'm just kind of filing away at it. And now it's starting to look like there was no mold line there and there's no soft spot either. So we've got all the mold lines cleaned off. Everything's looking pretty good, but you've still got the issue with the gaps. Now, some people don't care. They, they're good to go. So if you're good to go, um, you're ready to paint. But for like me, I wanna fill those gaps up. And over the years, I've found that some of those gaps, um, especially like on this Harbinger, some of the gaps are really, really fine. Like they did a really good job on modeling this model. So I've developed a couple tricks for gap filling that I'm gonna share with you right now.
part of the build where you got to start making decisions. So we've gotten all the mold lines off, uh, or we've desprued it. We've gotten the main, we've clipped the main uh, points of attachment points off. Um, if that's all you wanted to do, you were building your model or you were gluing your model, putting it all together. If you wanted to get the mold lines off, we I showed you how to, to uh, do a light mold line removal and then a little bit heavier mold line removal to get everything off completely. Now, your next question you got to ask yourself is are you going to be doing gap filling and if the answer is yes there's areas like the side of this model that are going to be problem areas so th those gaps are pretty tight and it's very hard to get putty down in there um, even if you're using some sort of gel putty or green liquid green stuff or something like that um, a lot of times you'll get it in there and then when you go to sand it or file it it pulls it right back out because there's just not enough space for it to to uh, stick to. So I'm going to show you real quick my really fast, effective way of uh, prepping your model for gaps. So <clears throat> do our dry fit, take a look at those mold lines. I deem them, uh, they're, they're actually not bad. I mean, if you just put this together and went with it, it, it wouldn't be that bad of a model. But to get the the my putty to stick down in those cracks i'm gonna actually make the cracks bigger so i'm gonna file a beveled edge all the way along this i'm not gonna worry about this top area so much and where the where the legs meet although sometimes it's just easier to do everything but i'm filing a little bit of a beveled edge in here i'm just gonna do it on this one side to show you how it's done Wipe all that stuff away. Sometimes it's nice to have a little brush or something just to kind of brush that off. Put this back in. So now you can see I've got a little bit bigger gaps there. And then I'm going to do the other side. This one you can be a little bit more aggressive with your filing. You actually want to remove plastic. two pieces back together again and now let's get a little bit closer oops now with the model a little bit closer you can actually see a little bit bigger gap all the way along that line so you might be saying Aaron you just ruined the model you made it worse but uh, you'll see here in a second when we fill that gap um, it will be much easier and then I've got some tricks for smoothing it out and it's very quick very effective and you will have no gaps on your model at all so this is a, a really easy way of doing it I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the model and then uh, I'll we'll, we'll glue it all together and we'll be ready to go all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do the the gaps in the rest of the model and we'll get this thing glued together and um, and then fill those gaps all right our glue has dried and now we are ready to fill some gaps. So I'm gonna pull his wings off, which luckily we didn't glue those. Um, I've got a couple things on my palette right here. I've got some Aves Epoxy Sculpt. This stuff is awesome. It's the cheapest putty you can buy. It's also, um, it also thins in water, which is important. I've also got my handy dandy wet palette with no palette paper on it. And basically that is so, uh, since this stuff thins with water, I can use it to put a little bit on my tool and smooth it out. Or I can use a paintbrush and uh, dab that in water and smooth things out as well. So, get my reading glasses on. Epoxy Sculpt is a two-part putty. Try not to mix up too much at once, right at the start. Um, a little smaller ball. And what I do to get even parts, they don't have to be exactly perfect, but kind of perfect is good. So I try to roll them into a ball. And you can kind of set them next to each other. I can tell that one's bigger. So I'll go 
a little bit off. There we go. That's probably close enough. Doesn't have to be exact. This stuff's nice um, because once it dries, it dries really rock hard and you can file it, you can sand it. Um, that's something you can't really do with green stuff or need a tight putty. Um, and this stuff will, will smooth out a lot better and a lot quicker than, than need a tight. Um, the other putty that you can use is called Milliput. And if you have some of that, great. Um, I get the standard, standard grade, uh, which is the white box with red lettering. Uh, the only problem with that is a lot of people are allergic to it. So um, I tend to just use the A's Epoxy Sculpt. It's cheaper as well, so um, you know it all works out. So I mix up just a little bit. Uh, if you mix up too much putty, um, it tends to dry quicker. The the heat that this creates in its drying curing process, um, if the if your wad of putty is too big, um, it will actually heat heat more than you want, and it will dry out quicker. So I want to be able to get in all these cracks very quickly. Uh, I'm just going to grab this and start pushing it in here. You see we're having those little troughs really pays off right here. So push it and squeeze. See, it just goes right into the, right into the trough there and it is perfect. So you just work your way around the head, um, kind of squeezing that putty in, uh, working around the neckline, all that good stuff. The, the inside of the mouth is kind of hard, so you got to be a little bit uh, creative with the way you use your tool. Um, sometimes I smush in a little bit more putty than I need and then just kind of scrape it out. Um, but whatever it takes to get into these areas, that's what you need to do. Um, I'll use my uh, the knife end as well and just kind of scrape away stuff, get away all the excess um, and, uh, and that gets the putty in. All right, now that we've got that putty on, um, I'm going to wet a brush. This one's just sort of a flat kind of short brush. It's a little bit stiff. If you want something like that, you know, nylon I think is, is good. You just don't want a really, really soft brush. What I'm doing, I'm going around you see that? and just smooth in that putty pushing pretty hard. You want to be careful. You don't want to wipe all the putty away. All right. So I usually work on small areas at a time. So like I'll do the head, um, smooth it out, and then start working on filling the gaps on like the arms, uh, you know, and just kind of work my way around. I don't, I try not to go too far because I don't want that putty to start setting up before I get a chance to smooth it out. So work on the arms. Um, again, you kind of got to be creative uh, getting that putty in, but in the end, it's totally worth it. <clears throat> Having those gaps a little bit bigger also really, really helps. The rib cage area, there's a little bitty gap there. Just work my way down into the legs. And get those feet. Get the feet, the tail, all that stuff. Um, and then I just kind of go back and forth between that and, uh, and paint brushing it down. You can see how well that smooths it out. Man, it's just so easy. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now you may have noticed um, when when I was uh, I was having problems with the feet. Uh, the feet joins are very small and um, they're very thin, and I think there's going to be a problem there. So I'm going to show you how to pin those feet um, and uh, make them quite a bit stronger. <laughs> All right, we're back and we have one last thing that we need to do to finish up the Harbinger and that is pin those ankles because I think they're a little bit weak. So things we got, put my reading glasses on. I've got this pair of pliers and it's got, it's, it's basically flat on both sides. Anything like that will work because we're gonna use this paper clip. It's a regular little paper clip. Some of them come with a little plastic coating on the outside. You need to get that off. Like this one has it, I think. Yeah, you need to get that off. So this flat pair of pliers, 
can start flattening out, straightening out the paper clip like that. That's all we need to do. And I'm gonna spin it like this, gripping on kind of hard, and that kind of takes off, cuts our plastic. I can pull that off, no problem. So I want it to go in like this. You don't want it to go like this because then you're gonna drill right through the foot. So like this probably, and right in the center. And it is much easier to, to get a center position if you use the pin. If you use the, the drill bit itself, like this, you can do kind of the same thing. But a lot of times it's too big to be able to see where exactly the center of the foot is. So that being said, I use my pin. I'm gonna make a little bore hole, a pilot hole with my pin. That looks about in the center. Basically to do this, I just push it in a little bit and wiggle it. So technically you're supposed to use the same size or a little bit bigger drill bit than your pin, but I don't know how big that wire is. So paper clip is a mystery. I've just found that this drill bit works. It's a little bit bigger so that the pin can go in easily, but it's not too big so that it's like bouncing around. So there's one of two things that can happen here. We can either A, um, pin this to the base, and or B, when I'm done, I can just clip the bottom of this pin and it will just be a pin going through the foot. So this is a lot easier to pin two pieces together though when they're already attached by just drilling straight through them. Now, if I wanted to pin say these arms, which I don't need to because they had their own little pins, but I would just come in from like an angle like this and I would drill right into the arm, push my pin down in there, glue it and I'm done. So um, very easy to do and it can really help to the stability of your model. One of the things I do to make sure I don't go too deep or too shallow is I keep measuring. So this is, I'm just barely hitting up into the second part of the leg there. Checking, that looks pretty straight. This, looks like my angle's off a little bit. So I'm gonna start I just angle my drill bit and it will carve a new hole there. Oops, and take that off. <laughs> All right, that was exciting. There is the, there's the hole though. That's pretty good. Pinning the model to the base, we only need one side, but we can put a pin in both feet. I think that will be fine. So, this other side needle tool out. Again, we're going to go at that angle. Wow, this one is really crooked. So, I'm going to go like right here. This is like an extreme, extreme kind of angle there. Carefully don't break the needle and then it goes into your hand or something. There we go. The key with both of these feet is just hoping and praying that um, you get through and start drilling into the, the leg before the foot falls off. Because you kind of have to put a lot of Torque on this to get it through, and that could weaken the join there. And we'll put put our pin in, and I'm going to use this thing and really push it in. And then we'll pull it out. All right. And that, that's the end of the hole. So I want to go back a little bit from that. Just a hair. And I'll 
I'll take some bigger clippers. So that'll be easier. Clip that off. One of the things I found to make this life a little bit easier on you, just kind of file the end here because there'll be like some little burrs from clipping it. File that down so it's a little bit flatter. And then it doesn't get caught on the plastic when it's going in. Once you got glue and stuff on there, man, it is kind of difficult sometimes. So, got this. I'm going to make one more test test hole. Not a test hole. Let's see how, how deep this is. So it's a little bit shorter than that. Perfect, 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 perfect. Because what we want to have happen is when this goes in, we want it to go a little bit deeper than it needs to go. And that way we don't have a pin sticking out. That glue. I'm gonna roll some of this on the pin itself. Push that in there. And I'm gonna take the end of my thing here. If that pin is is too uh, tight, oh shoot, it took too long. this be careful because that metal will file slower than the plastic so you don't want to file too much down but no I just made that flush with that I don't even think we have to fill that hole well we probably do we'll put a little bit of putty right there and we'll be good to go that's right this is going to be the pinning foot which is perfect so we got that. I'm going to get my little piece of paper here to wipe off any excess glue. See those little bubbles of glue coming out? I do not want that. So we'll wipe that off on that side. We'll wipe it off on this side. I'm going to grab our base again, which, ta-da, is finished. Put on it's in the right spot I'm going to pour some glue down in here and the lucky thing is we've got some some other glue will be deep down in there but where we had to glue it together take our straight rod here and sometimes if you spin it that helps it from from locking in and then we'll take this I'm, I'm pushing as hard down towards the knee as I can. There, there's our other one. Take our big clippers, cut it like right about there. Now, this thing, we can stick it down into something. So, perfect. Now we've got a pinned harbinger. He's ready to go. Like if this was, if this was, <laughs> Everything falls down. This was a big piece of cork, and this was shoved down into it. It would basically be like that. He'd be he'd be stuck on there. So there you go. All right, he is ready to go. All right, are you tired yet? <laughs> Sometimes putting a model together can be brutal, but it's very important to do all these steps to make it look super super good if that's what you want. Now, there's one more little thing. We're gonna clean up some last little areas and then we're done. So let's do this. Wonky.
and then back here in the tail where we filled all that in. You can put right where it actually goes through. I can create another little divot so it matches all the other skin. Sometimes it pays to put a coat of primer on and take another look at it because you'll see any inconsistencies or flaws or whatever. But at the same time, his skin's probably gonna be fairly textured when I paint it, so it may not matter that much if it's perfect or not. Because once the texture's on there, there'll be so much going on visually, you won't, you won't know the difference. But if you wanna get that nice and clean, that is totally up to you. All right, so he's all assembled and ready to go. All right, we finished assembling the Harbinger and we've done it the fast way and we've done it the slow way. Both ways are the right way if it's the right way for you. There's lots of things in this video. You know, this was a really long video, but I think it was important to go over a lot of different things. Um, and it's the Harbinger. He's like, he's like the Harbinger. <laughs> it's a su super cool model. Might as well be finished up to the best that you can. Anyways, I hope this video helped. Um, share it with your friends. If you know anybody who needs um, some help assembling their Harbinger, feel free to share this video with them. All right, until next time, go paint something. In fact, 